Hi, welcome to Stories of Art. My name is Karel Huidekoper and today I'd like to tell you something about the coolest painting you will never see. It's a painting by Rembrandt that is today called Christ in the Storm on the Sea of Galilee. And strangely enough, I'm actually showing it to you, but you'll never see it. That is not for real. And at the end of this video, I'll tell you, tell you exactly why that is. It is nowadays called Christ in the Storm on the Sea of Galilee. It didn't have that title in, in Rembrandt's day because titles for paintings weren't a thing yet. He painted it in 1633, just after he moved from Leiden to Amsterdam, where he would live for the rest of his life. And he was a very popular painter at the time. He, um, he painted mostly portraits, but also these history pieces. And history painting, um, it's a painting that, that describes a story, a story from either the Bible or mythology, um, and sometimes from, from recent history. This is one of those history paintings. It tells a story, and as you could hear from the title, it's a biblical one. It is the only seascape Rembrandt ever painted, as far as we know. And um, we can see that he was not very knowledgeable about ships. We'll get to that later. It shows us a, a story from the Gospels. It's mentioned in, um, in Matthew, Mark and Luke. And I'll read to you the, the section of where you can read it in, in Mark, which is chapter 4, verses 35 and 41. That day, when evening came, he said to his disciples, Let us go over to the other side. Leaving the crowd behind, they took him along, just as he was, in the boat. There were also other boats with him. A furious squall came up and the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him and said to him, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? He got up, rebuked the wind, and said to the waves, Quiet, be still. Then the wind died, uh, the wind died down, and it was completely calm. He said to his disciples, why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? They were terrified and asked each other, Who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. Well, it's pretty clear that this is the story that, that Rembrandt painted here. But it's a, a story you rarely see in paintings. It's quite unpopular for painters to, to show you this story. And for good reasons. Um, it's very, very difficult to do. Uh, the thing is, there are two different parts to this story that compete with each other if you want to show it in a painting. On the one hand, you have the big one, which is the storm. Um, you can show a storm and it's a big thing and an impressive thing. On the other hand, there's the, the personal direct story between the disciples and Jesus. I'll show you in, in two examples. Um, this is a, uh, a painting by John Martin. Christ Stilleth the Tempest, it's called, from 1852, so it's quite a bit later than the Rembrandt. And here you can see the big storm. There's a huge storm, you see the waves and the boat is, is clearly in trouble, and that's an impressive thing to see. So the miracle of calming that just by a word becomes an impressive miracle. Now you can also approach the story from the other side, uh, which is, the human inter interaction, because in this painting by John Martin, you can barely see humans on the ship. Now, in this different one, we see the scene from much closer up. And here we see the disciples, we see Jesus ma mainly calming the sea and his disciples being duly impressed. What we don't see is the storm. There's some waves, but really is that so much to be worried about. So the miracle of the sea, the, the, the storm itself, we don't see it and we're not that much impressed by it. We only see the interaction, we see the reactions of the, of the disciples. Now, Rembrandt could tell both sides of that one story in one painting, and that's why it's such a brilliant painting. And that's why Rembrandt is such a brilliant painter. Because 
just through the way he composed his picture, he could bring all of it together in one. See, we see this painting, in this painting, we see the, the ship, the boat, being pushed up by a, by a freak wave. And it's, it's tilted and we can see at the front that uh, people are trying to hold on for dear life. Um, that's, that's on the mast, you can see someone just holding on. We see others just hanging on to ropes and, and uh, what have you. And uh, everyone is, is busy with, at, at the front of the ship, everyone is busy trying to just keep the boat, boat afloat. You can also, by the way, see that, that here that Rembrandt didn't know much about ships because the ship actually makes sort of a, a strange sort of curve. Um, if you look at the back of it, it has, uh, that's where the rudder is, and, and the front, it seems to sort of be bent, the whole thing. And if you look at the man all the way at the front of the ship, um, he's holding on to something, but the ship sort of, there's, there's something he's sitting on that doesn't really look ship-like at all to me. If you look just a bit further down near the mast, um, there's someone holding on to, to some of the lines, uh, a man in yellow, probably St. Peter. You would expect... Um, Peter and the other fishermen in the group of disciples to, to help out on, on the boat. And why would it be St. Peter? Because he uh, has a prominent knife on his belt. And that's one of the attributes of St. Peter. We know more of the, of the keys, of course, but the knife is one as well. Um, that's because when Jesus was arrested, uh, much later in the story, of course, when Jesus is arrested, St. Peter pulls out a knife and cuts off the ear of one of the soldiers. And then Jesus comes, picks it up, and, and heals it again. So that, that's, the, that's the storm bit. Um, but already the light, the calming of the sea, has started. Because you can see the light coming in from the left, shining on the ship. And a much darker and much more intimate scene behind the sails, where only a few po points of light come through. And they show us the intimate tiny scene and there if we um, if we zoom into it we can see Jesus sleeping on a cushion as it is said in the Bible they wake him up and, um, uh, and tell him they're drowning they're afraid to drown as, as they do in the story and he's already rebuking them at the moment that he wakes up you can see his face lights up that shows us that he is Jesus and um, already is calm. We can also see in that very little part of the painting that also there the storm is still being felt because someone is throwing up over the side, just on the lower side here. By the way, the man holding on to the line and holding on to his hat is a self-portrait of Rembrandt. He, he used to incorporate these in, in all these history paintings that he made. Oddly, by the way, that the Sea of Galilee is called the Sea of Galilee and not the Lake of Galilee, because it's, it's a lake. A fairly big one, but still a lake. Um, but that's simply the name it got over time. Now, that's the brilliant part of what Rembrandt did. He could push the entire story, everything of the story, he could uh, simply get into one picture, where he would... You can see both the storm and the intimate scene at once. Now, that is a great painting. Now the reason you'll never see it. Um, in, um, it was owned by the um, Elizabeth Stewart Gardner Museum in Boston. But in, um, in 1990, on the 18th of March, it was, it was stolen. Uh, together with um, several other paintings, a total of 13 paintings were stolen. And the way the story was told to me, uh, that the guards of the museum were surprised by the robbers, the people who turned out to be robbers. They were dressed as policemen, and that's how they, they gained entry and tied up the, the guards and made off with, with all these paintings that have never been seen again. So if you do see this painting, do me a favor. Call the FBI, Interpol, or whatever law enforcement agency is at hand 
and convenient to you and um, maybe we can get it back to, to the Elizabeth Stewart Gardner Museum. Now, if you like this video, then please like and subscribe to my channel uh, so you can see all the other videos that I post. You can even hit the little bell thing so you can be notified when I post something new. And if you have any questions or if you have any suggestions of what my next video should be about, then please let me know in the comments. In any case, thank you very much for listening and see you again soon. Bye.